Everybody and welcome to the Pre-Accident Podcast. I am your host, Foo Today. Foo Today. Foo Today. For Today. Man, I'm getting in a hurry. And, um, you know, I was your host yesterday and probably will be your host tomorrow. And, you know, that's kind of part of the gig for sure. Today is a great day to do a podcast because, you know, here we go. It's March. It's deep in the midst of March. March is such a wonderful month. Again, I can't even tell you how excited I am about our little Vegas meeting Bob and I were just talking about all the fun things that are going to happen and getting everything ready and making the little books. And you know how this is. You guys do the same thing all the time. So that's fun. And uh, everything else is kind of shaping into good shape as well. That, so that's exciting as well. Today in my ever-ending, no, never-ending, it's never-ending, in my never-ending quest to sort of take us back to the origins of the new view, I found a really super cool um, presentation. I guess that's what I'd call it as a presentation. And it's by Johan Bergstrom. And if you don't know him, he's in the program in Lund University. He's a reader. And he really, uh, Johan's going to talk to us today about the two schools of thought around the ideas of studying human error. Um, You know, looking at human error as uh, understanding error as it relates to safety and risk and reliability. And, and I think this is just a great little, I mean, it's an amazing little clip. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a deep dive in a short amount of time. And who doesn't like that? <laughs> you know what I mean? You get lots of information with not a lot of investment. That's pretty much the way we go. And because I know everybody's super busy and it's hard for people to find sort of a place where all of this information comes together in this single very, very, very effective way. I thought, I'm going to just get this clip on the podcast. I'm a big fan of the Loon program. If you don't know about it, um, it, it's it's really a powerhouse. I mean, that's that's how I would talk about it. But I'm really a fan of, of Dr. Bergstrom, of Johan, um, because I think he just does a phenomenal, phenomenal job of what he does anyway. But he does a really good job walking us through some of the big rock stars of uh, of the new view. Now, Johan's going to set up um, the sort of two basic schools that exist around the idea of human error. If this were a religion, you could maybe call these sext, but uh, they're really more thought schools, and there's quite a bit of crossover. The first one is the cognitive uh, psychological school, and you'll know that because if you know anything at all about James Reason and your probably first introductions into some of this thinking is probably from the cognitive psychological school. The other one, not the second one, but the other one, because there are two, is from the joint cognitive school. And if you've read uh, David Woods is a great example or, or Jens Rasmussen, um, uh, Eric Hallnagel, those kind of guys, the, they're – they're deep on the other side of that equation. And and I, together, I think, they, they make a really interesting, uh, holistic understanding of the current contemporary view of error. And it's very different than the traditional view. You know, the traditional view, the old days, we talk about error-prone workers. Hell, I still have conversations in rooms full of important people around big fancy tables around error-prone workers. And it's funny when people want to tell me, well, you know, Todd, all this stuff's good and interesting, and, man, I'm glad we're having this conversation. But you've got to admit some workers are just more prone to making error than other workers are. I always want to tell them, yeah, but yeah, that's really true. A hundred years ago, um, it's not as true now, and that difference now is a big part of why I wanted to play this information for you today. I, I think you'll find this podcast to be a really, I bet you, pretty good money that you'll listen to this a couple times. That That's uh, not that I'm boldly projecting on you, but I'm really curious what you think about this as we progress through this discussion. Maybe the best way to do this is to simply go ahead and, uh, in fact, 
play this clip from Johann Bergstrom, Lund University. He's a reader, Dr. Johann Bergstrom, Lund University, and his discussion on the two schools of human error. Human error is often mentioned as a causal factor in accidents in a variety of industries. But what do we mean by human error? Even though the notion of human error has been around since the beginning of the 1900s when they talked about accident-prone people or unsafe acts of workers, it was not until the Three Mile Island nuclear meltdown accident in 1979 that it really became a target of scientific study and intervention in the broader safety sciences. Soon after the Three Mile Island accident, several academic conferences gathered the scientific elite of safety science and error studies to specifically discuss the problem of human error. And soon, two highly different schools of thought emerged. We can call them the Cognitive Psychological School and the Joint Cognitive Systems School. In safety science, the Cognitive Psychological School of Human Error is perhaps best represented by Professor James Reeson. Back in the 1970s and 80s, Reeson, who was a psychologist, studied the errors made in people's daily lives. And by studying diary notes in which people described their errors, he developed a theory of absent-minded slips. The Three Mile Island accident got James Reeson interested in the errors made by operators of high-risk processes, and he started analysing these errors using much of the theory he had already developed for everyday slips. Reason's Cognitive Psychological School sees error as a social fact of life, and in his book Human Error, published in 1990, he defined four subcategories, or types, of errors or unsafe acts. They are slips, which are failures of attention, lapses, which are failures of memory, mistakes, that according to Reason can be rule-based or knowledge-based, and finally, violation of rule or procedure. Reason's view is that categorizing human error can help to explain accidents. Human error can be labeled a cause. And the slip, lapse, mistake or violation are psychological cognitive models used to explain behavior. While Reason developed his human error taxonomy for high-risk operations, a different school of thought formed at the Nuclear Research Center in the Danish town Riese. Here, Professor Jens Rasmussen, together with others like Erik Holnagel and David Woods, developed the Joint Cognitive Systems School of Human Error. The two schools focused on the same problem of managing increasingly complex high-risk processes, but they came to vastly different conclusions. The researchers at RISA did not use people's everyday errors or experiments in laboratory environments as a starting point. Instead, they developed a naturalistic school, interested in naturalistic, real-world, high-risk work. Instead of studying error as a psychological or cognitive construct, they studied error as a product of complex interactions between actors in space and time. They asked questions like, how do people and machines interact? What constrain human action? What principles should guide technological interface design so that it facilitates human understanding of system states? It was by looking at human error from this point of view that they arrived at a radical conclusion. Human error is never the cause of an accident. Instead, human error should be seen as an attribution for other problems located deeper in or higher up in the system. Human error might then be seen as a symptom of such problems, but never the cause. Holnagel even went so far as to proclaim that the notion of human error is an analytical dead end. Ultimately, how to view human error in the wake of an accident is not only an academic exercise. This analytical choice can have great implications. Depending on what story that we tell about error, let us say an unintended harm to a patient during a surgical procedure, the two schools will suggest different means for system improvement. The Cognitive Psychological School will target system interventions at the level of the brain and focus on motivation, selection, proceduralization of human work and functional allocation. That means what tasks that should be performed by humans and what tasks that should be performed by technology. If we, on the other hand, follow the Joint Cognitive Systems School, we will rather zoom out and analyze the accident in terms of what contributed to what later looks like a human error, both in time and in hierarchy.
the Joint Cognitive Systems School, we look at how we configure humans and technology in their working environments to understand the constant goal conflicts that they face and the inevitable space between work as we imagine work and work as it's actually done. It's not until we understand such highly complex relationships in organizational time and space that we can suggest meaningful system improvements. There is no right or wrong view of human error, and maybe there will never be. We will need to make up our own minds of what stories of human error that we believe in and find credible in our efforts to improve our systems. Different stakeholders, such as accident investigation boards, safety managers, union and journalists, will take different views in the stories that they tell. So it becomes a question not only of how the story is told, but also of who tells it. Dr. Johan Bergstrom, reader, Lund University. Special thanks to Lund for this. Um, uh, couldn't do it without him. Uh, and I'm so glad that's up there. And we can talk about it and we can have this discussion. I guess the question I'd ask is, what do you think? I mean, isn't that a great five and a half minutes, almost six minutes um, overview of kind of where all this stuff came from and what it all means? And now you can kind of start dividing out people like you can probably tell which side of the uh, uh, the the two the two views I ascribe to. And and you can probably look at people you work with uh, around the world, wherever you are, and kind of get a feel for how those notions have really formed the ideas that have become this new way to understand really how work is successful. Also how work fails, but more importantly, how work is successful. Uh, that's really a big part of what happens. And I've told you this before, but the thing about error is it's so normal and it's so built into what we do and hardwired into who we are that it's interesting, but it's not very interesting. And it's probably never causal. Error exists in successful work. It also exists in failure. But it's important we understand error because so much of what we do, especially around adaptive high-risk work, is really directly correlated with the worker's ability to reliably perform this work without causing failure, small, medium, or catastrophic. And so understanding how to think about work but more importantly, how to think about human error and understanding the origins of where we came from, that's a pretty important part of what we want to do. And it's certainly worth our time to listen to on this podcast. That um, absolutely is for sure. I think it was a great way to spend part of the day today. It's a shorty podcast, but uh, you got stuff to do. I never feel too bad about going too short. That's, that's not a problem. I feel bad about going long, though. That's weird, but short. I'm okay with. I think this one has value and stands on its own. So I'll boldly compare it to any other podcast we've done for a long, long time. So I hope you get everything you need. That's really important to me. I hope you're having a great time to learn something new every single day. I know you did today. Uh, so much so that I bet you listened to this one a couple times. Um, have as much fun as you possibly can. And for goodness sakes, be safe. <laughs> And this podcast is brought to you by one of my very, very, very favorite works of published narrative, of, of written narrative. One of my favorite, favorite things to read in the whole world, the American Constitution. I can't support the American Constitution enough, and I ask you to make it your favorite document as well. If you're interested, go to ACLU.com.